one representing an act of service performed during the year by one of the children in the primary. I can only imagine the happiness these children experienced. as they told of their service, and then placed a warm fuzzy in the jar. <laughs> I share with you just a few of the countless notes contained in the many gifts I received. One small child wrote, My grandpa had a stroke, and I held his hand. From an eight-year-old girl, my sister and I served my mom and family by organizing and cleaning the toy closet. It took us a few hours, and we had fun. The best part was that we surprised my mom and made her happy because she didn't even ask us to do it. An 11-year-old girl wrote, There was a family in my ward that did not have a lot of money. They have three little girls, and mom and dad had to go somewhere. So I offered to watch the three girls. The dad was just about to hand me a five-dollar bill. I said, I can't take it. My service was that I watched the girls for free. A primary child in Mongolia wrote that he had brought in water from the well so his mother would not have to do so. From a four-year-old boy, no doubt written by a primary teacher. Quote, My dad has gone for Army training for a few weeks. My special job is to give my mom hugs and kisses. <laughs> I wish they said, and dad. <laughs> Wrote a nine-year-old girl, I picked strawberries for my great-grandma. I felt good inside. And another, I played with a lonely kid. I'm an 11-year-old boy. I went to a lady's house and asked her questions and sang her a song. It felt good to visit her. She was happy because she never gets visitors. Reading this particular note reminded me of words penned long ago by Elder Richard L. Evans of the Quorum of the Twelve. Said he, it isn't easy for those who are young to understand the loneliness that comes when life changes from a time of preparation and performance to a time of putting things away. To be so long the center of a home, so much sought after, and then almost suddenly to be on the sidelines watching the procession pass by. This is living into loneliness. We have to live a long time to learn how empty a room can be that is filled only with furniture. It takes someone beyond mere hired service, beyond institutional care or professional duty to thaw out the memories of the past and keep them warmly living in the present. We cannot bring them back the morning hours of youth, but we can help them live in the warm glow of a sunset made more beautiful by our thoughtfulness and unfeigned love." Close quote. My birthday cards and notes came also from teenagers and young men and young women classes who made blankets for hospitals, served in food pantries, were baptized for the dead, and performed numerous other acts of service. Relief societies, where help can always be found, provided service above and beyond that which they would normally have given. Priesthood groups did the same. My brothers and sisters, my heart has seldom been as touched and grateful as it was when Sister Monson and I literally spent hours reading of these gifts. My heart is full now as I speak of the experience and contemplate the lives which have been blessed as a result for both the giver and the receiver. 
The words from the 25th chapter of Matthew come to mind. Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it, and to one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. My brothers and sisters, may we ask ourselves the question which greeted Dr. Jack McConnell and his brothers and sisters each evening at dinner time. What have I done for someone today? May the words of a familiar hymn penetrate our very souls and find lodgment in our hearts. I won't sing it. Have I done any good in the world today? Have I helped anyone in need? Have I cheered up the sad and made someone feel glad? If not, I failed indeed. Has anyone's burden been lighter today? Because I was willing to share. Have the sick and the weary been helped on their way? When they needed my help, was I there? That service to which all of us have been called is the service of the Lord Jesus Christ. As He enlists us to His cause, He invites us to draw close to Him. He speaks to you and to me. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. If we truly listen, we may hear that voice from far away say to us, as it spoke to another, Well done, thou good and faithful servant that each may qualify for this blessing from our Lord is my prayer, and I offer it in His name, even Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.